internet friends, this is Magic Brad on Synergy Cafe with the Synergy Collaborative, and I've got another Synergy Cafe interview here, and his name is Reese Thomas. Reese, are you there? Hey, Brad. How you doing, man? Loud and clear. Oh, I dig your background. You hippie, you. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally, it's just like, you know, part of being, part of being an energy medicine practitioner is that I get to, I get to play with the, play with the, uh, with the chakras, the, the mystical experiences, so why not? Why not go with the, with the with uh, with what we're going to be talking about, which is energy work. Well, there you right? go. I'm a magician, so I know all about that. I know the the sleight of hand method, and then the other woo woo method too. So, <laughs> well, I'm not sure if you've seen some of these, but what I do is I try and find out who you are, what you do, and uh, get to know who you are. So, who's Reese? Are you married? You got kids? Are you where do, where do you live? Uh, well, I am not married, and I do have kids. I've got two boys that are uh, in their mid twenties. And uh, and out in the workforce now, so uh, and, and they're doing great. Wonderful, wonderful kids. I am uh, I am engaged, not married, oh. but I'm engaged and uh, and living most of my time over in in, uh, in Andalusia, Spain, so southern Spain. So is that so, where you're now? Uh, huh? That's where that's you. Where I'm that's where I'm coming from right now. Internet yeah. is just fascinating. This it comes in so crystal clear, and you're on the other side of the earth. Incredible. I was, I was the side of the world, and, and, it's, and it's awesome. Yeah. So, and I uh, and I run the Reese Thomas Institute of Energy Medicine, which I've been now uh, involved in energy medicine now uh, over 17 years, and running my school. We're going into our 14th year, and uh, and I help people um, really understand what these things are, uh, not in a you know as as healers, but also as as sort of understanding that that the energy we have in our lives. Uh, is is based not just on how we clear our chakras and how we meditate and things like that, but how we connect with this deeper purpose within us. So, so the biggest thing that I do is I help people, uh, um, you know, really find that that greater purpose. Before I was a before I was an energy healer for uh, I was a I was a tennis pro for 28 years and a coach and professional player and uh, and and I always I always was sort of looking at people and saying, you know, you got this thing in there that, that you know, because they always come in and they say, oh, I got a terrible backhand, or I, you know, and I, I was always like, you know, it's not about the backhand. It's about you enjoying that backhand more. And, right. there's, and there's a quality within you, like a soul quality in people. I always saw it, but it wasn't until I did energy medicine work and really tried to find my own, that own quality within me that I really, uh, that I really transformed. So, got so it, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm living, living in Spain, loving life. Uh, I run an energy medicine school in Boston and I fly back uh, and we do classes five times a year in Boston and uh, and it's like the greatest life. So the whole energy medicine thing, seeing we're kind of segueing into the what is you do, that that's like people that are logical, they don't get all that kind of stuff. But I understand that sometimes things just happen for a reason. You wonder why did that happen? And those are the kind of things that, that you can see it because like with me as a magician, when I see people do certain stuff, I know their sleight of hand that they're doing because I've seen it. Right. So I'm trained in it. Whereas someone else that isn't trained, they go, wow, that's a miracle. And I'm going, oh my God, you didn't see what he did. But you trained in the energy medicine, you see that stuff that you didn't realize why your, your golf swing is hooking. It's probably because you're, you're eating uh, you know, the wrong food. Right, something like that. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, and, and I go. It's it's even it's even more it's even more for me. I'm not. I, we don't do nutrition at, at the school. We really are are really the body's energy field. And uh, and uh, you know the interesting thing from what you just said was was that was that the magic is all here at the first chakra. Like the you know the magic, the sleight of hand is all is all is all based right here at the in the body and in, and it's sort of how you can uh, you know gain attention somewhere else while somebody does something from behind and uh mm -hmm. and the problem is is that is that that's actually what's going on we're so focused our we're we're tricking ourselves into believing so much of a, a sort of what's going on here that we're not seeing that behind the scenes right. our soul going come on there's i'm not kidding here there's no this isn't a, this isn't a trick this is your life and so teaching people how to refocus how to bring their attention Toward that part of themselves that is never been a trick, and when you know your purpose, and I actually, I, I, I'm sure, I don't know when you wanted me to share my book, but sure. my book is uh, Discover Your Purpose uh, book, Got and it. uh, and it's uh, this is a book I wrote with uh, with Penguin. 
It's how to use the five life purpose profiles to unlock your hidden potential and live the life you were meant to live. And this is sort of the foundation of what I teach. And one of the things that you find when you really discover which of these profiles you are, which are, which of these five basic soul qualities we have, um, that you can look back at your life and nothing was a trick or out of place. You, you start right. recognizing that everything that has ever come to you has come to you exactly. So that left hook on the, on the golf stroke, right. okay, that was telling you that you're, you're, you know, there's too much of you in the feminine or something like right. that. You know, it's like, that that's it's kind of what I meant. Yeah, it wasn't necessarily a nutrition kind of thing, but there's, there's some other reason than just the physical aspect of how you're holding the club. Exactly. Uh, I get it. That's so the, the the five the purposes. I think that's important that a person knows what their purpose is because they go through life going, God, I really don't want to go to work. I don't want to. But if you know your purpose, it's like let's go do this. Let's get it done. So I get that. Exactly. Exactly. So you and and your purpose is your purpose is very simple. It's never a job. It's never a relationship. And uh, and it's and it's not necessarily any one way of having your health. Even though when you are living your purpose, you tend to be incredibly vibrant and. And, and focused, uh, but uh, but your purpose is that thing. Like when you were a little kid, when you were just like, "Hey, we're gonna do something fun," you know, or, or like, <laughs> "Do you know that this is going?" On? And then that's what when you're living your purpose, everything you do is like that. It's like I know you do this on your show here. You know, it's just like you're just like, "This is great. We're bringing Reese on here. This is gonna be so much fun." It is, and that's and that's the way I teach. And if you're actually living your purpose, that's your purpose. Your purpose isn't to do any one specific thing. I mean, I'm, I've been a teacher my whole life, and so this is just a, another method of, of, of the way I teach, and that is part of my purpose. But, you know, if my school goes until I'm 80, great. If, if it doesn't, I'm, my purpose doesn't change because my job changes uh, or right. my relationships change. My purpose is to share this one thing that I knew when I was like two or three years old, and I was told to forget about that. We want you to be anything you want to become, Reese. You become that thing. And, and then we try to do everything else other than be ourselves, because that clearly wasn't good enough. And, and, and when, when we've realized later in life that we actually only have one deliverable, and we bring it to our business, we bring it to our relationship, we're not trying to be a businessman and a good you know, family man, and a, you know, and a, and a good uh, spiritual person, and a, like all these things are some sort of different things. They aren't. When you discover who you are and what you're really, what you really are in the soul at the soul level, it's only one thing, and yeah, it's that, awesome. That was really helpful because I know that my thing is to connect people. That's what I do with this: is connect people. I, I take this video and I propagate it out, and I connect people, and that's my thing. Ever, yeah. I've always done that with my trade shows and stuff. It was about connecting planners with suppliers and. That's just what I've always, always kind of done. So I get, it's, it's interesting because you get off and you go, gee, I'm kind of good at this. And you start doing some other thing that you're really not supposed to be doing. Right. So Because you, you, think, you think you're supposed to. And so, and so I've got the teacher archetype and you've got your pri as a primary sort of deliverable in the world. And you've got the networker archetype. And you've probably always networked and always brought people together and always done that. And it's not something that you learn as an adult. It's not like some trick. You go and take a course and you learn this sort of stuff. I just have this you sort know. of sixth sense kind of thing knowing that uh, that lady over there needs to connect with that guy for some reason. Right. I just kind of sense yeah. it for some reason. And I, and I look at him and I say, man, that person just needs to, needs to get a little touch of what I can see in them, which is there's amazing quality right. inside of them. That, that would make them so happy, and they're so unhappy right now. Why wouldn't they? You know, if they if they saw what I see in them, they would be so happy. I wanted to get into the the where aspect, and this this sort of goes with like where are you doing your work, and it kind of also goes into like how we met. We met at a live event, so I'm kind of curious. Where do you do your work? Do you do your work like remotely? only or do you do a, like live events and trainings so my, and things my school is actually in boston and uh and we rent out uh at five times a year we take uh, we run a live of basically we run a huge live event um we have about 150 students that come into the, and teachers that come into the into the uh, uh hotel we take over the hotel uh five times a year and we train people over a three-year period uh in three one-year modules of five classes each to uh, to become healers, really to be energy medicine practitioners, and and you know I define energy medicine very different than most people do. Um, most of energy medicine right now has been 
sort of looked at as a technique. Like, you know, there's like an infinite, the, the internet, what we're doing right now has basically opened up the world that everybody who's ever learned a spiritual technique is now putting it on, putting it online. And people are learning it and training in it and doing these things. And they're learning these techniques of meditation and healing. And, you know, there's thousands. And every one of them is working on these things. Right? They're working on the chakras, and every, every healing modality that, that is out there that you can learn and go and take, take a course and learn how to do that mentality uh, modality is running through one or two of the chakras. Okay, So think of any healing modality, and I can tell you what chakra that runs through Got it. and or, or what, you know, how that, what that dimension is. But the chakras, the chakras serve something much, much greater. Okay? They serve a soul quality, a, 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 a they serve a purpose why you're here. And the why you're here is, the, is really all the only thing that matters. Okay? The chakras serve that why. And if you can figure out the why, you'll understand your chakras. But if you keep arguing with your chakras why they need to be healed and what's the matter with this and how can I fix this and that, let me some Reiki <laughs> that and let me do this on this. Uh, your, your chakras get fixed and then they fall apart again because the issue isn't the chakras. The issue is, is that you don't know who you are right. and your chakras don't know which direction to go. Right. They're so, just doing what, so you're, what when, you... When you understand energy medicine, I see energy medicine as, as definitely all those techniques. Those are, those are brilliant divine gifts from God that teach us how to get ourselves back on track. But the healer, energy medicine, is when the healer blends their purpose with their action, with right. their technique. Because then and it so resonates. My favorite, healer, my favorite healer is Martin Luther King. because, And I don't remember him putting anybody on the healing table, <laughs> even though I do teach people how to put people on the healing table. Um, he stood up and knew his purpose, right? He knew his purpose and delivered that purpose through a modality called speaking right. and preaching. And then he healed millions of people. Got it. And that, that's much, that is like the, that's, my goal is to get one Martin Luther King to come out of my school. I haven't, I haven't had one yet, but I've had some pretty amazing people come well, out. That makes Every total person, sense in that, in that uh, yeah. if a person has an ear to hear, then they will listen to it. So what he was saying resonated with the people that wanted to hear it, and they would listen to what he had to say, right. and that would make them healed rather than opposing an issue. Or, or, or better yet, it's, and really the healing didn't come from what he was saying, but who he was saying it. Yes. He was standing... As a person, so for instance, when you go to a healer, or you go to a doctor, you go to anybody who you trust your, your life with, okay, um, and you go to them not because of their technique, because you know that there's plenty of people out there that do surgeries and do things, but there's a person there that you're like, there's something genuine here. This right. person has, has, is really, and somehow what they do is an extension of who they are. That's what energy medicine is about. It's not about the techniques. It's about the connection of my purpose for being a human being on planet Earth right now. Got it. And this thing. So your networking, my teaching that the soul is the way, you know, and that's <laughs> and, and that's how you heal. You heal from that. And you and your chakras, they're just always gonna be falling apart until you know who you are. Well, let's get into, like, like you said, who you are and, and why you're here. Well, let's find out yep. why you're here because I know that you, everybody knows that there's some kind of product or something or service or opportunity. So before I get into that, I want to ask you the, my favorite question. That's the big why question. Why yep. are you doing this and why aren't you still a tennis pro? Why are you doing this? Uh, well, I think I've always, I mean, like all of us, whatever we're here to do, we've always been doing it. But, you know, the, the, the big why for me and the big why for my, for my business and everything is that I was so sure I knew who I was. I absolutely, I mean, I, I, had, I had studied Wayne Dyer and Tony Robbins and Deepak Chopra and, and I had read all of the mystery books and the this and, and done, you know, the meditations and I was a black belt in the martial arts and, 
and uh, you know, I played pro tennis and I was running a big business. I was one of the best teaching pros and speaking. I was speaking nationally for the tennis industry and I was, you know, I was doing a lot. I was like, I was like, I got this together. But I was having problems with people at work. I wasn't connecting with my family. My, you know, my relationships weren't that great. I felt kind of isolated. I wasn't, you know, I kind of was like, I was kind of, you know, I was, I was totally a workaholic, you know, and I, and I couldn't stop. I didn't, I was working 80 hours a week. I was trying to become this super businessman that I thought, well, every guy should be a tough guy businessman. So I was studying martial arts and wanted to have a big corporation <laughs> and I was doing all this stuff. And, and I was getting sick and I was getting injured and I was having problems and I was, and, and, and I said, well, you know, there's gotta be other things. And I, and I was, I read Dan Millman's book, uh, the way of the peaceful warrior and right. I saw him and, while I was there uh, at, a, at, at a convention, I mean, it's just doing this thing about, you know, just being, your per being who you are. And, uh, and I picked up this book called Hands of Light by Barbara Brennan. And, and I was like, oh, healing, that's pretty cool. And I was thinking, well, I'm a, I'm a black belt in the martial arts. How hard could healing stuff be? So, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so then I, I, I signed up for that and found out that I knew absolutely nothing about who I was. I knew who I was supposed to be. But I had no idea who I really was at the deepest level because I had spent so much effort trying to be that person I was supposed right. to be as a man, as a, you know, and, and I'm sure, and, and listen, I work with 90% women in my school and they have the exact same story. It's like you had to be this person in your well, family. You exactly. Because we, we sort of put on this costume that we think that we're supposed to do. I learned early on, I got out of high school and someone, you should go get a job. So I did. I went and got a job with the county parks, worked about three years, got laid off. I knew that wasn't my thing. But I did it because that's what you're supposed to do. So I think that's right. what happens. A lot of people end up being who they're not. <laughs> well, and, and once you and once you've decided, and listen, you, this happens really early. I mean, we our parents were not that thrilled with who we were. They wanted us to be who they wanted us to be, and there's no undoing that. It's like right. you know, you as a kid come in and go, "This is it. I'm this thing. I'm not a boy or a girl. I'm just amazing." And your parents are like, "No, you're a boy. You're going to wear blue, and you're going to behave like this. And this is what we do in our family. It's our religion. This is our this is our language." And everything's already done. You don't get a choice. You just got to decide which one of these things you're going to be. Right. And we decide. And then we forget over time that that's not who we are. And we keep having all this pain and suffering, relationship problems, work problems, all the things I was having, which I realized that everybody I knew was doing the same thing I was doing. And the only thing stopping them from having pleasure and joy in their life was that they didn't have a path to figure out who they actually were. Got and it. that's what I've developed through my book, Discover Your Purpose. Yeah, I was just going to say, show us your book again, Discover Your Purpose. And, and or you get it on Amazon. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and I also have a school that teaches this step by step how to do this. So what's, what's, what's really cool, and I know that, the, that this, this big why leads to why I'm here. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm waiting actually, for that. <laughs> I've actually gotten, I've gotten well known enough that I, that, uh, that I've, that I have, uh, you know, been offered and, and, and I'm negotiating and working with this uh, incredible company now who's really putting a lot of, you know, really putting a lot of spiritual, spiritual uh, you know, work out in the world in a very uh, effective way uh, called the Shift Network. And, um, and I'm doing a course with them that's actually uh, coming up this, in this next month. And, and we have a, uh, a free teleclass, which will be, I, I think you'll put the URL on there. Yeah. But there's a free teleclass that will introduce you to what, to what we're going to be doing there. And basically what I'm talking about here is... So many people know the chakras or want to learn about the chakras, but do they know that if you don't learn the chakras based on your purpose, you can't really heal them? So I, 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 always, I always say, you know, I, I ask the students, it's, you know, it's like I, I hear so many people, it's like, why don't my chakras stay open? I heal them, right? I heal them. I figure it out. I go to the workshop. I do the... I do the shaman journey. I do the, the, uh, you know, the, the Tony Robbins weekend. I do it and everything gets all lined up and I'm boom, I'm on. And I'm really, and it's like four <laughs> days later, they're just as broken as they were last week. Why? It's because they don't need the external as much as they need the internal because the power, the real juice comes from the soul. Right. It doesn't I come see. from how you take care of yourself from the outside, even though that's important for the first chakra. 
all the other chakras. So it's not so much what them. happened externally, it's more how you feel internally about what happened externally. Exactly. And when you see that everything's <laughs> happening, and it's, and it's like, if you know your purpose, everything that happens, you go, oh, that's why. So there's five, let me just say, there's five kinds of people, right? There's five, pur there's five basic human purposes, which make a lot of sense. We need leaders. We got plenty of those. We got way too many of those, actually. And, and, they're, and, they're, and they're not doing a very good job. They're really, really not leading us in any, any wonderful direction. There are a few leaders that are leading in the right direction, and it's just a massive number of others that are just trying to take all the money and, and, take it, and take it and run with it. So we have leaders. We have to have leaders, and there's lots of them on the planet. Um, and then we also have to have the people that work with the leaders, which are the organizers that make sure the leaders stay leaders, right? They get them elected, they do these, they organize things, and, they, and they're the structured people. They're also the people that are, that are our doctors and, and you know, highly, the most highly trained and organized people that build skyscrapers and bridges and make sure things don't fall down in there. So we've got leaders, and we've got organizers, achievers. They're sort of the achievers in the world. And then we have the other three, which aren't running the world right now. They're the caretakers, the, the people that just, the big, warm, hugging, caring, they're always there for you. If you're sick, they're delivering food to you. They're, they're just, they just give and give and give and give, and they never ask for anything in return. Mm -hmm. And then we have, and then we have the, the lovers, right? The deepest feelers. And you know those people, they're so soft and so, you know, they're just, they're, you're just, you know, you, it's, it's like if you blow, you knock them over. Like so <laughs> gentle. They're just gentle. They're like little, they're trees wisping in the, in, in the wind. And, and, uh, and their job in the world is to feel and teach us all to feel like the, like the caretakers are here to teach us how to love each other and, and put, you know, love, love yourself like my brother. And, and, uh, uh, and so, and so, and so they, they teach us that. And then the last ones are a little more like me, a little more sort of, you know, uh, connected to the other side and, and highly thinking, super creative, um, you know, just, uh, you know, really, um, you know, bringing new ideas in. Like this idea that chakras are great, you know, but just like we learned that the body, you know, we spent how many years, how many hundreds of years did we spend studying everything about the body to figure out what makes it work? And then just in the last, you know, few hundred you know, we've really realized that the energy, these, the one chakra, the first chakra was the only thing we studied. And we found out, oh, my God, there's six more. There's six more parts of us that are really important that we have to let in and we have to understand. If we don't understand these energy centers. We can't stay in balance in our body. So our body serves these chakras. But what if the chakras serve something even bigger, something like this, you know, something huge? Right. Yeah. It's this soul quality, this, this deeper quality. Well, that's the next generation of energy work. When people realize the chakras were just, once again, the thing that we've now studied and gone back and forth and we know all about it. But now we got to go even deeper. Well, that's what I'm that's what I'm doing with the shift network. I'm doing a course, I'm doing a class that on how to take that, make that next leap from chakras to understanding what they really are, how they really work in your life and then understand why you have them. That's the key. It, just knowing you have chakras doesn't help the chakras. It does a little bit. But knowing why you have them, now you get to have, it's like, it's like six, six Maseratis rather than, you know, se or seven, seven Maseratis rather than seven old jalopies that you're driving around. Exactly. An old pair of, <laughs> old pair of shoes. <laughs> right. Well, I'm going to close this one off and beam it up to the universe and let people find out all this stuff. So you're working with the Shift Network, and you'll send me those yep. links on Facebook. If you want to hang on for a second after I close this off, and we'll have a little chat. But I really appreciate you taking the time. You want to plug your book one more time, show us your book, and it's the yeah, Shift yeah. Network. Uh, my book is Discover Your Purpose. Discover and Your you Purpose. Go on, you can go on Amazon and pick it up. But if you go on discoveryourpurposebook.com, um, you you'll also get some... Uh, keynote videos about profiles. This is a this is teaching you the foundation of who you really are. Got it. And then the shift network is who you're working with. And the shift network. Yes. Yep. Perfect. Okay, Reese. I appreciate you taking the time. Peace, love, and happiness. Brad, you rock. Thank you. You will. Thank you. <laughs>